Good morning. Welcome to Stand on the Word. Today, Ezekiel chapter 34, Leadership Matters. Verse 31, our key verse, and you are my sheep, human sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the Lord God. Now, the message in this chapter, along with the following five chapters, is not dated, so it is uncertain uh, when they were given. However, it is most likely that this came after the destruction of Jerusalem as it speaks to the reason that the people were scattered. Then it gives the people hope for the future by promising that they would have leaders that would look out for their well-being. Now, poor leadership is not an excuse for individual disobedience, but it is a reason. Now, leadership matters, whether it's in the home, whether it's in the church, the marketplace, or in the government. You know, rarely do people rise above the low level of poor leadership. And when they do, it's either revolution or revival. Now, in this chapter, Ezekiel is given a word for the leaders that uh, enriched themselves at the expense of the people. Uh, that, and these were the people that they were given the, the honor and the privilege of, of serving, but yet they took advantage of them. So the first thing we look at is the gorging shepherds. Verse 1, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds, thus says the Lord God, ah, shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves. Should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought, and with force and harshness you have ruled them. Now, these leaders saw the people as being there to exploit for their own benefit, not as those needing to be watched over, cared for, and led along a path of obedience to God. Verse 5, so they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the wild beasts. My sheep were scattered. Now, interestingly, this is almost the identical description that Jesus used in Matthew chapter 9. Verse 36, and it reads this, this way. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Back to uh, verse 6. They wandered over all the mountains and over every high hill, hill. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth with none to search or seek for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, declares the Lord God. Surely, because my sheep have become prey and my sheep have become food for all the wild beasts, since there was no shepherd and because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds have fed themselves and not fed my sheep, therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds and I will require my sheep at their hand and put a stop to their feeding the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths that they may not be food for them. Now, this charge against the shepherds is primarily against the civil leaders, but would include religious leaders who had civil authority. Now, David, prior to being king, was a shepherd, which became illustrative of the role of civic leaders caring for the people, protecting them as people throughout scriptures, throughout the scriptures are, are called sheep. Now, leaders, both civil and ecclesiastical, are charged with the care of the people. But here, the only thing they cared about was enriching themselves and making themselves great. Now, this sounds somewhat familiar, because some things never change. They took no care for the people who were uh, entrusted to their care and their leadership. But notice that God holds them accountable. Now, when we hear this uh, worn out phrase, separation of church and state from those on the left, they're not talking about the original meaning of uh, the origins of that phrase, a prohibition of a state church, which almost every Bible believing Christian would not want to see. We would not want to see a state church because history shows that a state church becomes an agent of the state and leads to corruption in both institutions. What the left is howling about is a separation of God from government. And we cannot accept what they want as government untethered to the truth of God, because that becomes tyrannical. 
Now, this passage, quite frankly, should make every leader shake. Because what this says is those in authority, while they might deny the authority of God for a short time, God will eventually exercise his authority and he will hold these leaders accountable for all of eternity. All right. Secondly, we see the greedy sheep. We had the gorging shepherds. Now we see the greedy sheep. Verse 17, as for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, behold, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and shoulder and thrust at all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad. So what's this? Now, this should come as no surprise. In the absence of godly leadership, the people acted ungodly, taking advantage of the poor and enriching themselves just as the leaders had done. You know, we all, as followers of Christ, we all have a responsibility to protect and care for the truly vulnerable and needy. I mean, look what James writes over in James chapter 1, verse 27. He says, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. All right, so we have the gorging shepherds. We have the greedy sheep. And now we see the great and good shepherd. Verse 23 And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd. And the trees of the field shall yield their fruit and the earth shall yield its increase and they shall be secure in their land. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke and deliver them from the hand of those who enslave them. And you are my sheep, human sheep of my pasture. And I am your God, declares the Lord God." Now, this looks to the coming reign of Jesus Christ, who is the beloved of God, which the name of David means. David was a type of shepherd king pointing to Jesus, who would ultimately sit on the throne of David and rule as the perfect shepherd king. That day is coming. Matthew Henry writes this. He said, quote, the under shepherds may prove careless, but the chief shepherd neither slumbers nor sleeps. They may be false, but God abides faithfully, end quote. While this speaks to the, this last portion speaks to the nation of Israel in the millennial, when the physical kingdom of God will be established with the reign of Jesus Christ, it also speaks to the church and to the spiritual kingdom of God, which is now. Now, if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, guess what? We are in his pasture and we are under his care. And he will not let wolves in sheep's clothing remain. We can trust the good shepherd. Father, thank you for your word. And uh, Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just help us uh, taking this word to account and application to our lives. Lord, for the leaders, may we not be gorging shepherds that would take advantage of those that we have uh, the the privilege of leading. And as sheep, Lord, may we not be greedy, elbowing others out of the way, but Lord, may we seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness. And Father, we thank you. We thank you for that great shepherd, Jesus Christ. And I thank you that we're in your pasture and that we are your sheep and that you have made us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thanks for joining me this morning. Invite someone to join us on this journey. Point them to TonyPerkins.com. They can see all the back episodes of this. They can get caught up if they like, or they can just start right now where we are. Uh, You can also find the Bible reading plan there as well. Until next time, keep standing on the word.